going to share a brief word before we, uh, before we close and share our Shakyamu moments. There's a, a physicist, uh, Niels Bohr, who had a challenge one day. He, um, his son had gotten in trouble. He had been caught stealing. And he realized that he had a hard time figuring out whether we, we have a new videographer today, by the way, so I said I was going to walk around to test him. So that's what that's if you're wondering what I'm doing. This is everybody can wave to Eric. Eric's back there. He's doing a good job. He graduated from our teen program. Now he's our, our video guy. So we'll see. We'll see how well he moves the camera. Uh, so uh, so Niels Bohr says, I, don't, I can't be mad at my son and fully love him all at the same time. It's too it's too much of a conflict. I, I can, I, it's either one or the other. I'm either angry or I think he's the best kid in the world. And he thought about it more and he tried to figure it out and he realized that these were just two, it's, it's hard to be both fully joyous and in love and proud and at the same time be upset and angry and disappointed. In Judaism, we deal with this all the time. In fact, we, uh, we have a story, it's the way the story is told, which, which fits where we are even in this room right now, uh, is that uh, there's a story of a village and uh, there's a funeral and a wedding on the same day and as the processional for the funeral and the processional for the wedding make their way to the center of town, they both get to the intersection at the same time, just like it's a stop sign at a four-way stop. And the rabbis ask the important question, which is, so which one goes first? Do you let the funeral procession go before the wedding? Or you let the wedding procession go before the funeral. And they decide that you always put life first. And so the wedding is invited to go forward. And so what some of you may realize, but maybe not all of you, is we've had a number of deaths this week uh, in our congregation. We've had a number of, uh, we have a number of, of yard sites, the anniversary of passings, a number of you are here to remember those that you've lost. And we have a bat mitzvah. Uh, and so this happens to us all the time, that we have something to celebrate and we have something to mourn all in the same moment and we have to figure out how to do both. And then we come upon our holidays. Last week we talked about Kol Nidre uh, and, uh, and how it's such a heavy moment that it, uh, it hits us like a, a tragedy that we start Kol Nidre, the prayer at the beginning of Yom Kippur in the evening. We start it with the heaviest the heaviest prayer, we don't softly go into it. Uh, it's in fact supposed to feel as if you are almost at a funeral. But it's preceded by Rosh Hashanah, which is supposed to be the birthday of the world. So we start with the greatest sense of birth and renewal and excitement, and we're supposed to celebrate on Rosh Hashanah, and then we mix that emotion with, with the feelings of loss and repentance and asking forgiveness. It's been said that uh, in the book of Genesis, which we, we often read uh, this passage at Rosh Hashanah, that when the earth was born, it was formed out of tohu vavohu, which we don't really know how to translate, but we say it's out of like immense nothingness. And one commentator said that nothingness is in fact what we should seek out if we want to live life to its fullest that before the world was created, there was nothing. After we die, we say we go back to the dust of the earth, that we are also nothing, and that everything in between is just too busy. That if we really want to experience life, we have to stop doing all of our stuff. Uh, and, and we're really bad at it. So if you think about the last time you were bored, uh, which for some of you may not have been you know, too long ago, Hopefully not in the last 45 minutes. Uh, the last time you were bored, how quickly you went to pull out your phone. Uh, how quickly you went to turn on the TV. That's not doing nothing, that's doing something. Uh, I'll tell a brief, brief piece from uh, my daughter's experience at camp and then I want to test you on something uh, that'll lead us into Rosh Hashanah in the end of our service. So there's an activity at camp, the kids at my uh, kids camp at Azrui, a number of the kids went there this summer. Uh, Whenever they go on a trip, they, can't, they confiscate all the kids' watches. You're not allowed to bring a watch on an overnight when you go to like a camping trip from camp. They, st they steal your watches and they say, if you ask what time it is or when we're going to get there, we are going to answer the same every time. 
we're going to say in Hebrew, sheva, sheva, vachetzi. Now, sheva, sheva, vachetzi is not a time. It means seven, seven and a half. That's what they say. It's just an arbitrary number. And so, without doubt, the kids get bored. They don't have any TV. They don't have any cell phone. They don't know what's happening next. And they say, hey, counselor, what, what time is it? And they say, seven, seven and a half. It doesn't matter if it's six in the morning or 10 o'clock at night or lunchtime or dinner. It's always the same answer because they say time shouldn't matter right now. Rosh Hashanah this year falls on Shabbat, which also means it falls on a weekend, which also means that we're going to have lots of choices. So I'd encourage you to find a way to make it time well spent by doing nothing, uh, by truly making it a time to reflect on the blessings you've had uh, and all that we have uh, to look forward to, to make it seven, seven and a half the whole day uh, so that we can have that one day that really feels like the beginning of creation because we're told that's exactly what that day should be. That's how we find our blessings is by sitting still. So there's a prayer I want to close with. and I'm going to make you work a little bit and I know some of you have dinner plans so you're going to work really fast. So the tradition at the end of Rosh Hashanah services in the morning is you end with an acrostic. Anybody remember what an acrostic is? Our kids are going to remember. It has the whole alphabet in it, A to Z. The reason is because in Judaism we say if something is A to Z, that means it's the fullness. But this is the fullness of all the blessings. Now normally it's in Hebrew, but they wrote one in English in our prayer book. So I'm going to start it, but I'm going to stop every other letter, and you're going to have to come up with something that's a blessing. Otherwise, we're here all night. So... The prayer reads as follows. I'll point to you when it's your turn. You just yell something out. Our God and God of all generations before us, may it be your will in the coming year to grant us a year of abundance and atonement. That's A. I'm going to take the second one because it's easy. A year of bat mitzvahs. B. A year of community and compassion. All right, I'm turning to you. A year of something for D. Devotion and exaltation, a year of enlightenment, a year of F, fun, a year of going up in gladness to the land of Israel, a year of health and healing and humor, a year of inner strength and well-being, a year of J, joy, a year of knowledge and learning for its own sake, a year of L, love. Uh, a year of meets vote and moments of sweetness, a year of nature protected and enjoyed, and enjoyed. a year of O, opportunities, a year of peace pursued with perseverance, a year of quiet and tranquility, a year of R, rest and renewal, a year of song and spiritual growth, a year of Torah study and tikkun olam, a year of U, understanding, a year of vows fulfilled and violence overcome. A year of W, wisdom. A year of coexistence among the families of the earth. A year of young and old reaching out to one another. Anybody got a Z? A year of zest, a year of Zion. We got a few Zs. Well done. Our God and God of the generations before us, grant us a year of gratitude. For the most profound of blessings, your gift of life. Amen. We'll take a couple if there were wonderful things in your life, Shakianu moments. Gene Simmons' birthday, if you know Barbara, she knows it's Gene Simmons' birthday. All right, any others? Any other good moments from this week? We have a bat mitzvah that can count again. You get multiple points for that. Jocelyn? Turning 84 on Rosh Hashanah. That counts. I have one. Yeah? My great aunt is 100 today. Wow, well done. And her sister's 104. <laughs> and they live in Florida and they look amazing. So we're going to invite Ilya.